All right, guys, GoToBoy32 here. Check it out. We're sitting out here on the Freedom Shack. This is the display table, and we're getting ready to do a full unboxing of this guy right here. This is the Primary Arms Optics. This is the GLX. This is the new one. This thing's awesome. And I've always been a big fan of the GLX models uh, since they came out. This is a new upgraded version, which I'm really excited about showing to you today. But the main purpose of this is I want to show you the details of the scope. We're going to go over to reticle real quick, and then later on this week, I'm going to put it on the full money, and we're going to take it out to the range and use it to go long. So, but anyway, until then, let's just go over to details. Yeah, this is the 2.5 to 10 by 44. You see that? There you go. First focal plane. Now, first focal plane, what does that mean? For you guys that are not familiar with first focal plane, it doesn't matter it, what zoom level you have it in. The reticle will always stay in relationship to the target. So if you're on two and a half power and the reticle is going to be itty bitty bitty bitty. And then if you zoom it up to 10 power, it's going to be big. Okay. Which it will go over that when we do the, the range test and everything else. So anyway, there it is. And this one right here comes with the Raptor reticle, which by the way, has become one of my absolute favorites. This guy right here is well, let's just say this. It's absolutely incredible. All right, what do we got here? Let's go over some of the details on the box. The first focal plane. This is 2.5 to 10. Power eye relief is 2.7 to 2.8. The objective lens is 44 millimeter. Total elevation adjustment is 125 MOA or 37 mils. Total windage adjustment is 80 MOA or 23.7 mils. Illumination settings, 10 with off between each setting. It weighs 22.2 ounces. And guess what? Lifetime warranty, guys. Auto locking system and return to zero elevation for accurate and repeatable turret tracking. Low profile turret design that still packs 100 clicks per revolution. And it's in mils, tenth of mils. Hardened steel turret click system for crisp, tactical, and audible clicks. Now, here's the difference these are not brass uh, little click pieces, these are hardened steel. What does that mean for you? You're going to get a lot more life out of it. Auto Live. This is, all right, so this is kick ass. And I'm so glad that they came out with this. Auto Live illumination technology that ensures your reticle is always illuminated when you need it and saves on battery life. I don't know how long it takes for it to go off, but it uh, comes back on. It's like shake awake. All right, Auto Live is what they call Auto Live. Daytime bright illumination and night vision capability with it off between each setting. You know what? I might have to break out the NVGs to see how that works. Low dispersion, uh, fully multi-coated high light transmission glass. By the way, manufactured over there in the Philippines, not uh, China. Okay, 6061 T6 aluminum alloy tube body, easier to shoot with generous eye relief and exit pupil, premium flip up covers included. So. First thing we're going to do is I want to talk to you guys about the scope itself. Let's go ahead and go ahead and get this thing out. Now, I do have uh, links on my website, kb32tac.com, that will lead you over there to these guys, and uh, that way you can see what's going on. So you get in here. This is the first focal plane reticle manual. This is uh, pertains to the, what do you call it, the Raptor. Now, here in a little bit, towards the end of the video, we will talk about the Raptor and its capability. It's a great reticle, and you know it is because there are several companies out there who are completely and totally ripping it off. Okay, so here we go, the first focal plane scope manual. So you've got a reticle manual and a scope manual. The coolest part about this particular scope, for me, here's your high performance uh, scope cover of thingies and these are Butler Creek nice got coming foam she's opened up let's go ahead and get rid of this thing open up the plastic so for me a DMR rifle 2.5 to 10 is an outstanding range for a scope uh, particularly this one right here using the uh, Raptor reticle now, what we're going to do is we're going to go from the rear to the front, and we're going to talk about all the details on this guy. And then what I want to do is we're going to show you how these turrets are taken down, and we're going to show you how it easy it is to adjust this stuff. Okay, so to make things a little bit easier for you guys to see, I am going to go ahead and bring it in, and we're going to brighten up that picture a little bit. But I want to show you the details. Look at those turrets. 
Those things mean business. And the cool part about it that I like about this is that you have the Raptor reticle, all right, as well as you can tune or turn the mill dots. Now, here's the cool thing. If you want, it does have wind holds in here automatically. So if you want to adjust the scope using your turrets, you can, or you can just use the Raptor reticle. Okay, so moving forward from the rear to the front, you have an adjustable diopter that has a very nice rubber piece right there. And one of the cool things that I really stress when it comes to scopes, especially you get into some of the uh, lesser brands, you are going to maybe see some movement in that diopter lens area. And what that will do, it will actually change your point of aim or point of impact. Not something you want to have, but as you can see right there, man, that's a pretty looking scope. Very cool. The zoom ring, of course, goes from 2.5 to 10. And it has this piece right here that you can relocate from here, here, and here based on sometimes you have a piece of equipment that may be sitting here or you may have a uh, 45 degree backup iron sight like that. So you need this adjustment piece to be located to where it's not going to come in and interfere with something like that. Zoom ring moves very, very smooth, very smooth. Okay, so moving forward, we're going to talk about this guy. It uses a CR2032 battery, I believe, or is it 32 or 23? Well, anyway, it's your typical battery. It does have 10 positions with an off switch or offs between each one of the clicks. Now, moving forward, you've got a parallax adjustment that goes from, let's see here, well, just under 25 yards right there. Hope you can see that all the way out to infinity. Very nice. Now, one of the things I want to show you is look at this. Look at that uh, elevation turret. Really cool looking keys right there. You depress that and that allows you to go 4.4 point, <laughs> 4 mils under and then you go back to zero and then you have 100 clicks or mil, point tenths of mils in each rotation. Listen to that clicks. Hold on. And the thing about shooting competition or being in an environment where you want to return to zero in a zero lock, that's very important. Feel that. Same thing for the windage. You have one tenth mil clicks left and a lock back. I'll break it down so you can see it. Just like that. Okay, moving forward, you got a 30 millimeter tube with 44 millimeter diopter, lets a lot of light in. This thing is absolutely incredible. Let's get on to the nifty ditty part of taking a look, taking a look at the interior. And we're just gonna do the elevation uh, adjustment knob simply because, well, I don't wanna get all involved in this thing, but you've got an Allen wrench key screw right there, one right there and one right there. They're located here, here, and here. Outstanding. In the kit, you're gonna get these right here. This is a 1.5 and a 1.3. The 1.5, I believe, is going to be your, let's see here, hold on. Yeah, the outside one's right here. Uh, the 1.3 Allen wrench, you do not have to back these all the way out, okay? I get, here's what I'm getting with this scope. You're getting for $650, and I'm not trying to sell this deal. I don't have to. You're getting one heck of a scope for that dollar amount. And I think this thing will compete with just about anyone up there. So at that point, you're just going to reach up. You're going to pull it out. And there you go. Anyway, beautiful turrets. I do like that locking thing. Okay, so here is the interior. This is what the interior of this guy looks like. Now... What you've done, say for instance, we've got this thing and we have, hold on one second, let's do this real quickly. I'm going to say, let's uh, go ahead. So let's say my, now we're zeroed in, but we have to make a change and we have to lock the turrets. That's what the whole purpose is behind these guys. So what we're going to do, once we got it zeroed, don't touch the turret again. Then we're going to go ahead and loosen this guy up. We're going to bring it off the top, directly off the top. 
And that's all we're going to do. Now, on the internal portion of this thing, this is the beauty of it. There's no clutches to worry about. There's no nothing. The only thing anybody worry about is to not over torque these things. They specify foot four inch pounds. What I'm going to do is there's a screw here, here, and here. Do not touch that guy right there. Okay. Do not touch that guy. Again, I say again, do not touch that guy. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and loosen this up. All right. Just like that. You don't have to back that screw all the way out. As a matter of fact, please do not. You can see it when it starts coming out. Then we're going to take this guy right here. We're going to bring it in. Back it out. You can actually see it when it starts to come out. Do not allow that to come all the way out. And then this guy right here. And then what you're going to do is simply raise this guy up. See how that goes up and down like that? So what we're going to do is I'm going to raise it up, keep it all the way to the top. Might be easier just to hold it up, okay? And then I'm going to hold it so it hangs. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is we're going to tighten these back down. Remember, four inch pounds. Don't over tighten them. They don't have to be too tight. And what I do, me personally, is I just snug them up a little bit and then we'll go back and apply it. So it would be nice if there was a 1.3 inch Allen wrench head that I could use with my Borka kit. But they only go to, I can't find anything less than a 1.5 or more than, all right, at 1.5, which I have. Okay, and now what you do very simple, very easy, is you just place your cap back down on top of this, where it reads back to zero. See that right there? And then we're going to take our 1.5, reset those. Now, this is a lengthy video, guys. I apologize, but uh, I want to go ahead and get the details on this thing. This is a magical scope. They really did it right with this one. The nice thing is you've got a 30 millimeter tube, which is useful because it fits a lot of different mounts. And we're actually going to use an American Defense mount on this guy. We're gonna level it up later on and we can go from there. All right, so now the zero stops are set. Bang, you can go four under, which is normal. It locks back and there you go. Very, very, very cool. So anyway, there you go. Now. Let's talk about a couple other things <laughs> other than the scope. The beauty behind this scope is the reticle. All right, so here we go, guys. This is the Raptor reticle. It's basically the ACSS with some kick-ass features on it. So let's go ahead and talk about some of those features. And then what we're going to do in part two of this thing, we're going to mount this thing to the rifle, and we're going to take it out to the field and test it out. So the first thing that I want to show you that derives from the ACSS reticle is this guy right here. This is the chevron tip, which means that you can actually place this thing, I don't know, out to 200 yards, and on a one mil or one MOA target, you can still put this thing right into the middle of it because it points to infinity. I like the Chevron much better than I do, and here's a bigger version of it, much better than I do actually a dot. Uh, on my Platinum, I've actually got the one MOA dot or two MOA dot, which is fine, but I prefer this guy right here. When they come out with the Platinum with the one to eight, I want this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one that I want. So next what we have is we have the bullet drop compensation right here. This is the beauty behind this thing. So there are different distances for zeroing for different ammo. And you have to do your work in order to make this thing work. I have found that with a 77 grain, about 50 yards works really, really well. But we're going to go ahead and set this thing up in accordance to the directions when we get out there because I'm running a 16-inch barrel. You want to zero at 100. This equates to 200. This is the BDC section, and you have this little 
post right here, which I love because uh, on average, a lot of the targets that we shoot in competition are at 300 yards. So all, it gives me a nice, clear, defined area. Then you got 400, 500, 600, 700, and 800. Now we've got a thing called horizontal ranging. This is pretty cool. Now I want to show you something. This is an IDPA target right here. There is 18 inches from here to here. Now, on a true DMR, you're going to be shooting at silhouette size targets. Let's just leave it at that. Okay, so this is where it's really cool on the BDC. Not only do you have a bullet drop compensation, but you have a sizing chart that indicates 18 inches. So 18 inches to here to here sits right on top of that 300 yard mark. Then you have 18 inches from here to here. So all you have to do is you take your target and you mate it up to whatever line there is. Now what we'll do is I'll actually shoot steel as well as some IDPA targets to show you through the Tacticam, <laughs> through the lens scope, how this thing works. Absolutely magical. Okay, so we got the BDC, we've got the horizontal ranging, and next what we have are the wind holds. Right here are little dots. If you range something out to 600 yards and you estimate there is a five mile an hour wind, crosswind, you're just going to hold that target right here. And guys, these are accurate as all get out. 10 mile an hour, five mile an hour, about two and a half right here is what I have found it really works well. I'm not going to be shooting 5.56 five, out past 600, possibly 700 very often if the target's not big enough. But anyway, this thing right here does the trick. Now here's another portion that I want to show you that's absolutely cool. Is in the event that your silhouette is running left to right or right to left, <laughs> and at 8.6 miles per hour, here are your target lead holds, here and here. I think that old Dimitri has thought of everything. And again, this is why companies are trying to imitate this or work around a patent pending uh, copyright of this guy any way they can. I know of one company that has uh, got holes like this, except they're not doing foot to sh uh, head, they're doing waistline to head, which is really ignorant. But anyway, you've got these ranging brackets over here. So if you've got, well, let's see, a silhouette target with legs, <laughs> and he's standing from here to here, which is based on five foot 10, he's at 400 yards, 500 yards, 300 yards, 800 yards. And what we may do is I'll set one of these things up so you can see exactly how accurate it is out on the range. This is the stuff that I truly enjoy and I have a lot of fun with. One of the cool parts you'll find about this guy is the build quality is second to none, lifetime warranty, and it is made in the Philippines. Where this thing shines is, I believe, the turret design is top notch. It's easy to use, it's intuitive. And then you've got the reticles, be it, be it this guy right here, the uh, Raptor, the R-Grid. Uh, there's a couple other ones out there. So anyway, uh, base price on this thing is $649, which if you're looking for a mid-range scope that's not going to break the bank, and uh, this is one that I would truly, really and truly recommend. So anyway, guys, that's it. This is my deal with the, uh, what do you call it, GLX from Primary Arms, lifetime warranty, 649. This is the Raptor. Let's go to boy 32. Ugh, that was fun. I enjoy doing scopes. I can't wait to take this thing out into the field. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's go to boy 32 again. Uh, we always end up like this. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. I'm talking about those guys and girls who fight for our Constitution as it was written by our founding fathers. 24-7 for our freedom. Because freedom is not free. That's going to be a good shot right there. Let's go to War 32. I'm out.